coffee. Here you go. Cheers. 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 It's afternoon. We're going to have a really good episode for you today. Uh, part two of a series. We're talking about the kind of the plight of the elderly at this point in time. And it has gotten a little bit worse. But today we're going to talk about elderly, well, senior citizens. I'd rather say that. Some of some of the seniors out here are getting a bit elderly and we're going to talk about some actual people that we know and we have changed the names because we would not want to embarrass them but these are real life cases of things that are going on out yeah, here absolutely i know so this is number two and then we have number uh, if you missed last one we talked about a lot of statistics of uh, senior citizens and this the 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 state of what's going on in America with seniors and how they're the poverty statistics, things like that. And then number three will be, we'll focus a little bit more on some solutions. Thank you. A couple of you have actually offered a few things Yeah, already. Been great. I know it. And, and this episode, we're going to include one of your comments because it was a really good comment. Right. And we have some things that we want to say about your situation and offer some advice to anybody else. But first, <laughs> I want to do a shout out. Well, I want to do a shout out to Nancy. Yeah. My sister, Nancy. I know. Hey. I even used your name that time. I'm sorry, but I won't say where you are. No, 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 no. <laughs> She's yeah. hidden away. Yes, she is. She's yeah. our little hideaway. Hi, sis. Yeah. Hi, sis. <laughs> uh, we're the same age, too. Yeah. And then um, I want to do a shout out and put in a little bit of a... a a push for at be a lighthouse it's all one word it's in the comments and I'll put it in the video description and it's with she's Glenna and it's with Poshmark and if you type in at be a lighthouse it's all one word um, you'll see it's called Glenna's closet and she's got some really cool clothes in there and items and so I just said she's a really good friend of Paul and ours and we did a video a van tour featuring her featuring her um and her business and I, you know i just like to say that yeah i didn't know anything about poshmark or be a lighthouse right but i saw some products actually i believe the products i saw were purchased from glenna from this lady over here to my right yeah um and it's very i want to say high class it is a uh, very quality uh, product yes mostly clothing i think and right. i think mostly female right but i did get some perfume from her yeah very and nice. oh yeah and i saw i said well we were in court and i said well let me take it over and see if paul likes it first i loved um, it yeah loved it. i'm where i wear it almost every day yeah. um yeah because if, if if you know me and you followed me for a while I like to be a stylish nomad. I don't want to just, you know, um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with flannels. He loved, I had a flannel shirt. He loved me in that flannel shirt. I don't know why. He just said, he was, oh, I love you in that. But I do like to be stylish. I don't see any reason why we can't be stylish. And so I work on it. Yep. And so I want to also mention, we'll get into it, but I just want to mention that I'm featuring all my wigs. These are, these are, oh, your hair's so cute. Well, I'm featuring, these are wigs. This is another one. I have five and I got four from Cindy. Hey, Cindy, shout out. And I also have, if you look back, I think it was around February that there's a wig. We did a whole wig video. So if you go back to February on my videos, yeah, you'll see that one. But this is a number four. And then my next video will feature number five. And I just may cycle them all around. I like it. Yeah, he I likes like these. Yeah. I am kind of partial to the red, but <laughs> I like this one too. And I know. Maybe well, it, no, it's not red at all, but yeah. it's still very attractive. I know. Well, we're in our studio, everybody. Abby's back here. Maybe you could hear her eating. She's back <laughs> here. Uh, she just went for a little bit of a walk, and we came back, and we've got the windows down this time because um, we're in a place where we're, we have shade, but we are also, it's, it's not busy. 
it's Sunday and uh, so they're not open and we found this little spot here to hang out so I you did mention also we're just I'm going over some things right mm -hmm. and um, you mentioned that there was a lot of glare on our glasses lately so we're doing our best for trying different things yeah because I did mention that there's a whole video I watched on how to get rid of there's always going to be a glare on glasses unless you have proper lighting for it there's a trick yet to do Mm. That also involves having a studio in your house. And a lot of YouTubers, I will mention, YouTubers have studios in their homes. They have a dedicated bedroom. That's why they have such superior lighting. And, ooh, you know. Well, I always say love your nomad YouTuber because we don't have that. <laughs> We're at the mercy of the elements, yeah, and our vans. Yeah. So, you know, speaking of nomads, yeah, I'm not going to say where we are or anything like that, but... It is a Sunday afternoon, so there's uh, not a lot of traffic, and we're right. in the parking lot of a business, and it is closed on Sundays, but I counted eight no obvious <laughs> nomads right. parked here with us yeah. because there is a shade, a solar panel, yeah. uh, roofing, if you will, and there are eight, or were, I, I think we've done a little switching around, but there mm -hmm. were eight different nomads here that are... I mean, it's pretty easy to spot them, you know, when they've got their windows covered yes. and, and such. So, yeah. uh, we're just part of the gang, you know. I know. It's like a little <laughs> neighborhood going on around here. Right. Yeah. Well, let's get into it, shall let's we? Let's do it. Who is our first candidate that we want to mention? These are real life. We're not kidding. These are real life people. We change it. Well, this one, we, we're not even going to give a name because it really doesn't matter. But, yeah, I'll let you kind of introduce him. Well, this is an individual that I don't believe I've actually met. I haven't either, but I know of him I've, through I've a very close friend. Heard a lot about him. I sure. know that he uh, emigrated to uh, the America Yes. Uh, a number of years ago. From Europe. Right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, because of that, he didn't work here for a long time. Uh, yeah to accumulate uh, points or whatever they call it for social security. Yeah. So his social security payment is, is uh, or income, is, is very low, doesn't amount to, to much at all. Yeah. Um, and he is, he's a senior citizen yeah. now, and he is collecting his social security. Yeah. What little bit there is, which right. In these days, it just doesn't leave much yeah. extra cash, especially for gasoline. Right. So he's yeah. usually sits in in one spot for months at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, he yeah. tries to find cooler weather in the summer and warmer weather in the winter. Yeah. Uh, and stays pretty much in one spot, as I understand it. Yes. Uh, and and we've seen quite a few nomads who have said that that they just can't afford to travel yeah. and they sit in one spot. Right. So. And his, I I believe, uh, our friend told us that I can believe his social security is somewhere around like two fifty three hundred. Oh wow. Seriously, yeah. Seriously. Yeah. It's very low. Well, because he didn't get here to no no fault of his own, he just didn't get here. And I'm sure that he had, and he's from a European, actually, it's it's more of a Eastern European country. Yeah. So, yeah, <coughs> excuse me. So, yeah, I mean, it's, um, I don't think he probably came over with his, his fortune. And, but I hear he's a really great guy. And I just wanted to mention him that because he can't travel very often, he stays like in, um, like in quartzite area as long as he can until the very end because he doesn't want to move then he goes in another area where it's a little bit cooler but this is a major this is a major behavior of a lot of nomads now right. because of the gas prices especially but this was going on even before the gas prices he, he because of his income he yeah. couldn't really move around very often yeah and when you talk about staying in quartzite to the very end i don't know if he uses a temperature to yeah. gauge that yeah but if you're in quartzite in what uh late april, april may mid april you didn't you and glenna stay till mid april i'd gone down to tucson and you and glenna stayed till wasn't it mid april it was early april but it it was heating up oh and boy the, and the winds were blowing yeah. yeah that's what it does there in the yeah. uh, springtime 
And now where did you and gonna go? I think you went to was it St. George? St. George, Utah. Was it cooler there? Or no? You know, I don't recall it being much cooler there, to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. uh, there wasn't as much wind. Okay. Uh, so that was a little bit more pleasant. Okay. Because yeah. when the winds blow in the desert, you've got the dust, yeah. and it's not yeah. very, very nice. But, but yeah, St. George was a, a very nice place. I right. liked it. Yeah. Well, I want to do a shout out to Pete. I don't know if he's watching this. But we met him today. He recognized us both. And he's also, we talked a little bit, five years, but he's also staying in one spot too. Yeah. Nomads with the gas prices, we're stuck. We can't do much traveling. I mean, some of you do. If you have a really, you know, a, a good income coming in, yeah, you can travel and do whatever. But a lot of us are kind of staying put. Right. In one and we're doing the same thing after our cross-country jaunt to Ohio <laughs> I and know, back. I know. Uh, it was time. The, there were three months there, I guess. That yes. The gas companies made a lot of profit off of the, the two of us, but yeah. uh, now we're staying put and yeah. driving very little. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's get on to um, one of you that made a comment on yesterday's uh, video. Now, you had mentioned that you are a senior citizen. I think you're a year younger than I am. So you're 68 and you wanted to get into, I had mentioned in the last video that we, it was called the truth about van life. And I, we're trying to present the truth out here. We want the truth because it's not all rainbows and unicorns out <laughs> here. It's not there. I mean, even I do get kind of irritated with the heat i this might be my last kind summer. of irritated i i just <laughs> is this hot and in my minivan it's just hot it and i'm getting tired of the heat but um you had mentioned that or i had mentioned somebody mentioned <laughs> that there are a lot of big channel you nomads youtubers who are what we call the influencers. And the problem with that is, is that they are living in customized <laughs> grand vans and they're making it this grand adventure. You know, it's not always a grand adventure. With what we're seeing out here, oh my gosh. It's, it. you know, even as a YouTuber, I think maybe I'm a little bit of an influencer. I like to tell it like it is. Well. You had mentioned your comment. You mentioned that yes, you got started because of all of these bigger channels, and you wanted to do it. So you sold your house, <laughs> and you went out and you bought yourself a Class C. I believe it was a Class C, and you so. spent a good portion of your money from selling your house to buy this Class C. Well, thus far, now. The gas prices are up. Yeah, you sort you know. of, you feel, I sensed that you felt stuck. Like, yeah, you're right. I was one of those that listened to all those Nomad channels. And I bought the Class C. And now I feel stuck. I can't move very much. The gas prices. So, Paul and I wanted to address, and you have our hearts. You really do. And I don't want to, I don't want to ever make this out to be this romanticized especially now with the gas prices the way they are and the way you put it is very good it, it's not all rainbows and unicorns it's not uh, it's really not it, it's uh but it's a life yes. that i've come to love yeah uh, oh I, I still love it but i mean yeah the heat is kind of getting to me but that's yeah yeah well let's talk about this class c we were both said well whoa Maybe we need to mention it to y'all. Getting a Class C might not be your best bet. And why is that, Paul? You you described it very well. Well, in my humble opinion, <laughs> there are a lot of RVs that are not, how should I put it, made to last. They have very thin walls. They have very, uh, yeah. I'll call it inexpensive construction. Uh, I love my van, and one of the reasons I love my van is that it has metal walls. 
Yeah. And as a matter of fact, in mine, I actually, because it, it was actually a cargo van, they had a protective cover over all the interior walls uh, of a very heavy black plastic. And that not only insulates a little bit, but it's a sound barrier as well. And that metal wall isn't going anywhere unless a, ve a vehicle decides to smash into it or something. Yeah. Um, but on a Class C, they're just not, they're not made like a custom home for crying out loud by any stretch of the imagination. Well, I actually heard that they're manufactured to not last. Can That's you imagine? Weird. I know, they're manufactured that way. I have seen so many Class C's, more Class C's than ever Class A's or B's, that they literally are falling apart. They're, they're the worst um, ones that I've seen. I mean, they're like almost sort of decrepit. The walls kind of lean a little bit. They're not straight. Yeah, we're seeing more and more of Class C's. And you have a little bit of uh, photographic evidence of that kind of thing. Yeah, I do. Uh, and I d actually featured one before. We were, he had bungee. He had bungees around it to hold everything together. Unbelievable. And I show you a picture, and I went online to see a picture, and I think somebody else entered online that same that same picture. Sure looked like the, it. Yeah, it looked like, oh my gosh, it looks like the one we saw in Tucson. Yeah. yeah. So don't be afraid to use um, the buck, even if you have a class A, B, or C, don't be afraid to use the bucket system and the pee bottle system. Because a lot of people now, because of gas and they're just hunkering down, they're not using the showers or the toilets because then they have to run in and, and get the dumping going on with their gray and black water. And so, quite often have to pay for that dumping. Right, yeah. so don't be afraid to, and, and I already know for fact, that a lot of you, I met a lot of you in class C's and, and B's that you already used it anyways. Um, these RVs that say, oh, you can't bring a minivan in or something because you don't have everything contained in the bathroom. Well, I guarantee, I laugh because a lot of the people that you are letting in aren't using them either. They're not using their bathrooms, yeah. So, yeah, so what's, what's, the, what's the better deal then? Well, I, obviously, I am prejudiced because I love my van. Yeah, uh, I have a, a uh, uh, it is it is not a built uh, van. I have some wire baskets, and very shortly we're going to do a van tour. We're waiting for uh, some uh, additional supplies to come yeah. in for my solar that I'm putting on the roof, and we're going to combine all of that and do a van tour. But I do have some wire baskets that are on the walls. I've got a couple of uh, drawer units. Uh, that I that I find and and they yeah. work very well for me. Right. And then I've got a couple of the good old totes or bins, whatever you call them, uh, that are in the in the back in the garage. But it it it's just sturdy. It's a it's a regular highway vehicle, and I get about eighteen miles to the gallon. So and that's loaded up the way I'm loaded up right now. So yeah. I think that's pretty good. Right. Uh, if I, and I know this, the, the Lee is very partial to minivans, but a minivan is not for everyone. No. I can stand up in my van. I'm mm -hmm. six foot one inches tall. I can stand up. I'm not anywhere close to the roof. And I've got a small area. Uh, the bed, of course, takes up uh, a bit of room. But then I've got a small area with a chair yes. and a table. And, and uh, yeah. I don't know if you can see any of that back there, yeah. but probably not. But anyway. Let me, let me look back here so they maybe get an idea. Vanna will hey, now show go, off the up. interior of up. my van. Yeah, here, here we go. Here's, <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so it's very roomy yeah, for Abby, me, and I'm a big guy, Abby. and uh, I just think it's a great way to yeah. go, but that's my humble opinion. And that is a humble opinion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next two, um, I know them, and so I want to make sure that we've changed their names, but I do believe that it's worthy to discuss because these are some, they're sad cases. And we're seeing this out and about here now. Well, we'll call her Shirley. She's in a class C. 
she's about 75 years old and she spent about a seven years as a nomad oh seven years a nomad yeah mm -hmm. uh, very intelligent she has a college degree uh, I know that um, uh, she's kind of quiet about things about her past life um, but she what she does now here's here's what's going on she travels she has a couple of really close friends she travels off and on with one of her close friends one of her male friends um, not in a major relationship just friends relationship but she's a bit of a recluse she's not she doesn't put herself out a lot so she has a couple of really close friends but what's going on is her um, van does not it doesn't run well at all in fact uh, every once in a while she actually has to have it towed to another location she's 75 and her van does not work well and she has no money I think she's probably got a little bit of an income coming in yeah, yeah. but it's not enough to be fixing her van. Probably what has happened is her savings have run out. She's been a nomad so long and she doesn't work at all. And how can she get to work? Her van doesn't work. And so people have actually helped her move her van, actually put it on a flatbed and tow it to another location. So what she's doing at this point is she's staying six months here and then she moves and she moves it to another place six months there. Now, you know, Shirley is really a nice person, a little bit kind of on the quiet side, the humble side, but I don't know. My advice with this is if you're in this situation and you want to continue being a nomad, I don't know. I, I think that you're going to have to not be so much of a recluse. I, 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 that's just my hum, that's my humble opinion for whatever it's worth. And because you're going to need more help out there. I don't know her family situation. I really don't. But I do know that she spent a long time in the heat of the summer because she couldn't move and didn't have any help. To move her she not, a, not she a pleasant situation she could have in. died in her van and and when somebody did say to well how are you doing and they said oh my god you've lost so much weight well she's lost she'd lost a lot of weight she said it was too hot she couldn't even eat so here's the deal if her van isn't running she has to get help to go take her in to get food and water wow Thank goodness she has wonderful friends. That's but there's only three or four of them. I mean, in that situation, and they've got their own lives. Yeah. And they go places too. They've got their own lives. Yeah. So, this is one. This is a drop in the bucket. This is a, a little sand pebble of what's going on out there in the whole beach. Right. Right. There are people who are elderly and getting older. And don't have a savings anymore they got rid of everything they got and their savings now is depleted because they had didn't work that's why I got to keep working and I I'm gonna work until whenever because I love it you know I mean I do I, I do love working even if it's at Amazon or whatever I will mention though I didn't on the last one on getting jobs as far as Amazon goes on um, uh, warehouses they're few and far between now, and why do you think that is? Well, the the economy is is slowing, yeah. and people are not buying as much. Yeah. I understand that uh, what is it called Prime Days? I guess there were two of them. This yeah, year. two days. Yeah, uh, it wasn't wasn't what it's usually yeah, cracked up to be. So they don't need as much help in the yeah. warehouse. Yeah. So anyway. But if you're older, you must, you must, you must keep yourself in good working order so that you can go get yeah. a job. Now, one of you did make a mention on the comments. I said, well, my, my sister-in-law or my sister, or I think my sister-in-law, you know, she's older and she's a little bit on the, on the heavy side, but she got a job and she loves it at Walmart. Oh, I'm so glad. You have to understand though, if you're going to be overweight and, um, 
it's going to put a lot of uh, wear and tear. She was only, what, 62? By the time she's 65, 70, uh, her knees, it really is hard on your knees yeah. and your ankles, your feet. Yeah. So I just say, you know, keep in shape, everybody. Do, you know, that's the one thing you can do. You are in control of your body. And, and anybody that says you're not, well, you know, you... Um, you, you kind of are. <laughs> it's your body. You got to take responsibility for your body. Yep. I think I'll probably get a good comment. Well, I have yep. this disease or whatever. I understand that. But if you're overweight, you do have, uh, you can take care of that. Ooh, the wind's blowing. Feels good. Yeah. yeah. So this is what's going on out here. And thank you for all of your comments uh, that you make out here. But um, if you don't take care of yourself or you just ignore working, and you don't have a big savings, you don't have a lot of social security coming in, I would get your, I'd, I'd brush up your resume. I'd get it going or just apply. You could even start at Walmart. Uh, we saw in a Walmart on our travels, starting at $18 an hour at Walmart. So there wow. you go. Oh yeah. And and restaurants, they're paying, they're paying better too now. And still including tips, I believe. Yeah, and including so. tips. Well, when we were in Colorado, we were coming um, near Cheyenne. We asked him, we said, well, we're just curious. What do you get in per hour? Is it gun up chills? Oh, we get like $16 an hour. And I'm like, because he's a good tipper. I said, whoa, you don't have to tip this one. But yeah. can you imagine making $16 an hour and still getting tips? She's making more than, yeah. Yeah. Not too shabby. We have a. The wind's kind of picking up. We have a, a um, emergency blanket over, so not so much glare. And it's working. Look at yeah, that. I think, it, I think I it's doing a good job. Okay, so our our suggestion for Shirley is make sure that you're out there making new friends, always making new friends, networking. And also get yourself brushed up so you can maybe go get a job. But now she's in a point where she doesn't have a vehicle that works, so she wouldn't be able yeah, to work. That but makes that, that may so my best bet, your best bet is to keep making friends and kind of get a network going. Yeah. Right. Now, the final person we'd like to uh, talk about a little bit, again, we've changed the name. Uh, we'll call him David. Yes. He's somewhat of a, of a rec recluse, uh, 65 mm -hmm. years yeah. old. Uh, has a class B uh, van type vehicle mm -hmm. with pulls a trailer uh, yeah. has two dogs mm -hmm. and has been a nomad for 10 years yeah wow he uh, loves going up in the mountains and kind of hanging out yeah yeah very little income again yeah the income is is, is very uh, much lacking uh, and he's needed friends at different times. So, David has a couple really close friends, and in the past, they've really had to go help him out. Uh, and they've had to go over big bumpy roads to go up to, to the mountain to, to go <laughs> rescue him so that he could get help with this trailer or something like that. So it's really good to have friends out there, folks. You've got to have a good network and good friends. And there's some good nomads out there that are just so willing to help out, well, aren't there, they? There, there can come a time when you just can't do it all yourself. Right. You've got to have a helping hand. Right. And so all was well until, until he broke his wrist. He fell and he broke his wrist. Yeah. Um, he called and one of uh, his friends had to go and take him to the hospital. And uh, so he moved and uh, he sort of moved closer to a group of people sort of like a caravan type but not quite uh, an official right. caravan yeah. and everybody had to do everything for him and it was his right hand <laughs> oh my gosh and they had to help him with the dogs and so he's needed so much help and this is going on out there this is another case where it's going on this was a year ago that he broke his wrist and he still because of his age he can't really lift anything and so he just needs constant care all the time. Um, he can't really do a lot of lifting. And if you have two dogs, you have to lift dog food. And and guess what? I mean, the, the van is, as, as typical, the van isn't running overly well anymore. 
and he doesn't have the savings. This is a, a this is a repeat. This is a storyline over and over. Their savings are gone. They don't have a lot of income coming in. They can't work because they're older. They didn't keep up with their working. They didn't keep all that. You kind of got to keep in that system a little bit, don't you? Right. Don't you think that's a good idea to just stay in the system somewhat? Well, and that is very true. Plus the fact that as you all may know your social security is based on is it five years or ten years i'm not sure but those last years of work and if those last yeah. years before you claim social security uh, is, is yeah. with little or no work mm -hmm. that really hurts really has it a very negative effect yeah. on what you're going to get well, it did with me it, it definitely did with me for yeah. sure that's why yeah so um now now comes the final blow. Um, he was having a hard time breathing and he went to the doctor and he said that there's, he's got some lung issues and he doesn't have anywhere to go. So in his case, I would say he needs to be taken and, and I've talked to some other friends of his, he needs to be taken off the road. This, this man needs to be taken off the road. He should not be a nomad right now. But you know, no, you get older and you want this. This is, it's, it's a way of life and you don't, it's like, how dare you tell me that I can't be a nomad. It's but, like taking a person's freedom away. Yeah, yeah. I'll never forget the day yeah. that my dad had to uh, give up driving. Yeah. When I took those keys, <laughs> that was tough. Yeah. Because your freedom is gone. Yeah. And that's very hard to do. Yeah. For anyone. And it could happen to any of us out here. We're older. Do you have a lot of seniors out here? And anything and things can go wrong. You know, a, a health issue can crop up. Sure. Now I remember Floor. She was in our group. Do you remember her in our Facebook group? I remember her so vividly. She was new as a nomad and she just wanted to see everything. She was a little overweight, she, but she was going from, she was going so quickly. She was going to from national park to national park to national park. Well, she tripped. Then she had to have one of those boots on. She was a heavy lady, not obese, but she was pretty heavy. People in the group were saying, Floor, just slow down. You need to rest that leg. Well, she didn't rest it. She didn't rest it. She kept going. She kept going. The last thing I heard was that um, she ended up in the hospital. And then somebody, a, a family member, uh, took over, got into her Facebook group and told everybody she died. Oh, wow. Yeah. So one, one thing going down can keep going over and over and over and over until you're done. She only had to, what I think it was maybe nine months as a nomad and that was about it because she didn't, you, yeah, you don't want to go so fast, everybody. I say take your time. Just What's you the know, hurry? <laughs> you know me, I said, I, I called that, I coined the phrase urban nestle, just nestle in for a while, then go, go check out some other things and then nestle in again and just relax. I don't, did I mention that we both took a nap today? <laughs> we did. He, I could see him over. I was in my van. I could watch him, and I could see his head bobbing. <laughs> so I came out. I was watching a program, and I came out, and I just, like, woke up, startled him. I, said, I can't get away with anything. I'll keep my eye on this guy. <laughs> but I told him to go back there, in there, and he goes, I think I will. And uh, he took a long nap. And so then I was watching a program and I put my pillows down so I could lay on, on the on the floor part and uh, I fell asleep too. Yeah. It was just perfect timing. I had sat up and I was looking around because I told myself, when you wake up, just go like this so I can see. I just sat up and I was sitting there looking and I saw him come around and, and he I couldn't see me. He goes, I go, oh my gosh. I text him, I go, I just woke up and I just got that. So yeah. even we took a nap today. It was a lot of fun. Oh, pretty good. I know. I love. Um, I love. It. It's, I love a good Sunday afternoon nap. Huh? There you go. We go slow. We just take it slow and easy, right? Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed these um, 
the, this, these are examples of what's going on out there. Do, can we talk about what's going on here? I mean, just, um, sure. I know. Um, this we, is a yeah, tough, tough situation. Yeah, and I'm not going to, we don't talk about where we are only because, um, safety, we just don't say where we are anymore, but we're here and there's kind of a little community going on here and you begin to see the same vehicles, the yeah, same people yeah. over and over yeah. and over, and you kind of recognize them, yeah. you know, and sometimes you, you know, wave at one another, yeah. but this uh, gal yeah. was a little bit different. Yeah. Um, she kind of stayed by to herself. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, I, I mentioned her in one of my videos. I didn't mention her by name or show anything, but I said, I cannot, it looks like she just threw everything in her van right, quickly yeah. it was almost as if she was gonna move i didn't know she had no window coverings nothing so i did mention her once before yeah but well well uh she also began to park overnight at a place that we stayed during the day um but we noticed her vehicle was there and Lee, I think it was you that noticed it was a very hot, sunshiny day, and her windows were all up. Well, first we mentioned, I go, boy, she just doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. She just stays in her van. I, it was kind of off to the back, and she just stayed there. And I remember thinking, wow, she just stays here. She doesn't really go anywhere. But then, it was just a few days ago, I mentioned, I go, oh my gosh, her car is in the sun. And she must be dying in there. All the windows are up. Right. There was no window coverings, but it was so far away I couldn't see. Well, you had mentioned what? You noticed something on her windshield. Yeah, a yellow piece of paper. Yeah. And sure enough, it, we're not supposed to, and we don't, but we are not supposed to. Uh, it is very well posted that you cannot uh, stay here overnight. Yeah. And sure enough, we went down and looked, uh, Lee went down and looked, and the, the notice said, uh, uh, Warning. Warning. You, that you are viola in violation and you will be towed. Yeah. yeah. Well, the thing that bothers, we both were like, we, we can't stop thinking about this poor girl. She's probably maybe around 45, maybe. Yeah. Um, is that you don't just i look because her windows are open um because i was afraid maybe she died in there well your her windows were her front not, not covered her front window had the windshield you know the accordion silver one yeah. but her side one she never did get uh side uh covers for her windows i looked in there she's not in there and everything's still in there and it's been over a week now well and it's, so yeah. then we all of this stuff goes through your mind which, yeah did uh, was she kidnapped? Right. Was she running from someone and and he found her and took her away? Or, right. Uh, has has she gone off into the woods and tripped and fell and yeah. hit her head on a rock? I, right. Well, we talked to a gentleman this afternoon. Yep. I went over and talked to him again. It's a guy that I had seen again and again and again. A fellow nomad living in his vehicle, and asked you know the story on you know he said i don't know the story but i know that she's been there for over two weeks and i know that there's the thing on the windshield and the police were here they got her license number and yeah. so we know that the authorities have been notified what they do with that information i don't know yeah but it it just continually goes through our mind oh yeah what we were talking we about it at lunch today oh my gosh you know what could we do to help what if I have no idea if the police, if the authorities have been notified and know that this thing has been here for so long. And it's obvious, as Lee said, that someone was living in that vehicle. Oh, she was living in it. We saw her, uh, you know, in a couple other places, too. Yeah, yeah. She would go in and use the bathroom, come out with clean clothes. She was kind of a, although this guy said she was very friendly. She wasn't really friendly to us. So I kind of thought maybe she's a recluse sort of. Didn't, you know, like maybe she was running from an abusive person or something. Yeah. But he said she actually, and there's the few homeless that, well, in my mind, in my, in my, <laughs> in my humble opinion, I have a hunch, uh, she's a missing person. And I don't think the police will do anything about it. 
they'll divide just tow the car it's she's from it's an indiana plates so and i and she has a, it's a carrier on the top yeah. it's things are just shoved in there but the police should know that you know if you have all your belongings in there i don't know if they totally understand the nomad life or whatever I, but i would certainly think so well, with the number yeah. of nomads in this area yeah it, in every area as far as that goes yeah. i would think that they yeah. they know pretty well what's going on except they don't know any more than we do i yeah. suppose what happened to her now i was gonna i was gonna keep you know paul was saying well maybe it's better a girl calls but the guy kind of made some sense i really hate to say this and i know we might get some bad comments on this but uh -huh. he said he was going to call too but he said i'm not going to do it he said once you do that the way the police are now you become a suspect you or a, become at least a person of interest person as of they say. interest and your name goes in her file if she's ever found i mean they're gonna like oh yeah i remember this person let's go talk to them okay. and so we're just like wondering i hope she comes back well but, the thing is we know that the police have been there they yeah. put the notice on the uh, yeah. windshield and so forth so they're aware of the the part of the situation anyway so yeah. i don't it's know what more we yeah, can tell them it's out of our hands i mean yeah. but why are we talking about this? Because this is the truth about the nomad life. Yeah. This is the dark side of yeah. the nomad world. It's not always a bowl of cherries. You, it's so. not rainbows and, and unicorns. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not even, I would say, maybe even a, a tenth of the time, it's not rainbows and unicorns. Mm. Unless, let's do, let's do an unless. Unless you have big income coming in every month you've got good support system it really comes down to a lot of money if you've got the savings and the money coming in you can you you're never going to be hurting for that that you can't repairs on your van right. or you buy a new one although we did mention that coming up might not be so easy to get a new van yeah. you know with this conflict in eastern uh, europe but you've got the money to get the repairs as long as you're patient because there's a waiting list and but you've got it you've got it going on there are people out here the senior citizens out here that are doing it because of whether they did it in the first place because oh i want the big adventure and then they get the reality out here and all of a sudden their savings are gone they're stuck yeah. they're literally stuck so next um, our next episode will be we've got some solutions. What are we going to do about it what, anyway? What can we do about this? We offered some solutions for the some of our um, people that we talked about. Yeah some, yeah, some good ideas. Yeah, that that makes sure. Whoops, that light does go out. Um, we found a light up here. <laughs> it's like oh okay, but yeah. Well, um, don't forget minivanlee.com. We've got those exercise tapes. Um, they're not expensive and they're on sale and so go ahead and get them and start doing them even if it's just two or three times a week get off your butt yeah you gotta get off your butt <laughs> you cannot i mean even if you, you could be in a house and yep. if you don't have family around something could happen to you yep and then they find you later no that's really that's i'm sorry i don't mean to be so doom and gloom but you do need to keep yourself active Right. Don't let yourself go, everybody. And if you do need to work, go get a job and get yourself out there again. Yeah. yeah. And then we've got the book, How to Live in a Minivan, the Minivan Leeway. So you can, there's a difference between having to go in your van and preparing to go in your van and living with comfort and ease. Yeah. Right. So we appreciate your time. Subscribe, give us a thumbs up. And we'll see you on our next episode. Well, and hopefully we'll have some uh, thoughts yeah. and ideas that, yeah. that might uh, help in some of these situations. Okay. All right. Love you guys. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.